Hola amigos and welcome back to another episode of La Vida Verde podcast. I'm your host Matthew Human here at Finca Vida Verde. And uh, my guest today is Gustavo Rojas. Gustavo has been involved in Think of It Verde since the very beginning, pretty much. Um, he is a biologist. He is a Costa Rican. He's a beekeeper, a natural farmer. Um, he's a father, and he's also been uh, a member of our eco village here, Taco Tall. So it's going to be a really sweet conversation. I hope you enjoy. Gustavo Rojas, welcome to La Vida Verde podcast. Thanks, human. It's a <laughs> pleasure to be here. Uh, I really appreciate the work you're doing, like bringing people together to to bring their perspectives, you know, to make it more uh, more wide, you know, the way we are approaching here the land, the way we are connecting with, with these ecosystems here, with this life here. Uh, and I feel you're doing a, a good help for the community here, you know, mm -hmm. just by by bringing these opinions. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. That is definitely one of our goals is to spread information and, and bring the community together, too, which yeah. is mm -hmm. it's kind of like, um, yeah, that's been a secondary like benefit to this podcast. It's really been a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. um, Gustavo, I'll just start by saying I think you may never meet a sweeter human being than Gustavo. I know that he's going to he's, he's going to be shy about this a little bit, but he really is just I've always just appreciated your calm nature and um yeah, like we used to call him Kilo because he was tranquilo all the time. Now <laughs> now he's a man grown, so he's Gustavo. Um but um I met you what it would have been about um it would have been about 12 or 13 years ago. Maybe 13 years ago. Yeah. Even more. I think 14, 15 wow, years yeah, ago. We're, Time we're is passing. <laughs> we're si. moving fast. Si. Um, and Gustavo was came here with his wife, Rosa, mm -hmm. and they were members of our, they are members of our community, Taco Tal, but they joined, um, I think it was my second year, uh, our third year of Taco Tal, and you guys had been traveling the world going to eco villages. Yeah. Yeah, when we got here, we were not married, though. But, oh, really? Yeah, yeah we, just, uh... we got married after two years being here in, a, in an early honeymoon. Oh. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but before that, we traveled the world. Uh, we did some sort of pilgrimage, visiting eco-communities, eco-villages. And we started in a very special place in India. I mean, we didn't decide to do like this. It was just... Uh, you know, Rosa went there. I was doing some work in Germany. I realized, okay, I should either or come back to Costa Rica or go there and look for Rosa. And then I went there uh, without saying her. <laughs> <laughs> and she was taking an Eco Village um, network course or workshop. Uh -huh. um, and then uh, we got very interested into that. I got there. We started volunteering in, uh, in Auroville. Have uh, you ever Auroville, heard? Yeah, Auroville, Auroville, yeah. Auroville, yeah. Auroville, I've heard uh, of it. Yeah, I've never been. Yeah, the city of Down. That's how they call it. It's an amazing community, an amazing human experiment with people from all over the world mm. and different um, farms or, or projects into an area of India. Uh, and so we were able to volunteer there in aspects related to growing food and to reforestation, which was more uh, at that time was more passionate for me that part reforestation now, reforestation now the passion for me is reforestation but also making a um, mm. uh, farm making like the balance uh, the balance you know farming right. farming and at the same time benefiting the ecosystem and yeah we were able to to be there in our field which was amazing and after the after that after a few months volunteering there we got to know different projects around india happening around india we took a biodynamic farming course over there hmm. with indian farmers it was wow. amazing uh, yeah we met a very important person in biodynamic farming his name is peter proctor mm -hmm. and his wife we took a workshop with him and it was a great introduction into biodynamic farming <laughs> and into the philosophy you know the uh, Rudolf Steiner philosophy. 
Why don't, yeah, why don't you share just a, a brief, like, kind of an overview for those people who don't know what biodynamic farming is? Like, what separates biodynamic farming from, like, other natural farming practices? Okay, uh, from my perspective of what I have learned, you know, it's that uh, biodynamic farming is, uh, is also considering aspects that happen in the universe, you know? It's cosmic. Cosmic, yeah. yeah. Uh, cosmic influences that are occurring and influencing our nature here you know us as humans mm -hmm. and also nature itself all plants and animals mm -hmm. are being also uh, absorbing and 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 connected you know we are you know when re when you try to pick something uh, by itself alone you realize that it's interconnected with many things. It's uh -huh. very, it's impossible to ca to take just one thing. Uh -huh. It's all interconnected. So true. Uh, and and that's a, a main consideration that it's for sure more complex. wide and complex. No, it's a than huge. That. It's a whole field See, of study. But that is just yeah. like a, a brief description that I yeah, can yeah. give. And after after being in India, visiting some communities, we traveled in Europe as well. We visited some biodynamic farms in Germany, which was very interesting. It's a, it's the place where, where the philosophy or uh, the right. origin of the Rudolf Steiner's yeah. German, so exactly. yeah, yeah, and and other countries of of Europe as well. And then we visited the kibbutz in Israel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really interesting kibbutz named Neotze Madar. It's a beautiful place as well in terms of community unity, mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. uh, and. And after then, we traveled back to America, to, to, to all America, the continent, and we traveled... <laughs> what? From you mean America isn't just the uh, United States? America is the whole <laughs> continent, for sure. Yeah, I, I, want, to all let, the, all I want to let people know that America is the whole continent. All of the South, South and Central Americans uh, are laughing because this is, this is a truth <laughs> that many, as you probably know, many Amer United States Estados Unidians think of themselves as like we're americans but it's like actually america is this whole freaking two continents actually yeah sure yeah we came back to america uh, and we came back to brazil brazil yeah that was our flight you know from europe to brazil very contrasting flight same as fr from europe to india which is a strong contrast you know mm -hmm. like you get a completely different perspective of humanity mm -hmm. there and then same when you travel to to um, uh, europe to to brazil but to Brazil, you know, you find some things that are you're more used to, for sure, as as being Costa Rican, right, you right, know, right. As, as, being grown, as being grown here compared to to India or maybe Africa. I've never been in Africa, but maybe it's a different contrast. It's kind of like a mix of African, European, and and um, uh, like Latin American uh, kind of pre-Columbian pre uh, and pre-Columbian too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we we came back to Costa Rica from Bahia in Brazil by land all the way to Costa Rica and wow. it took us one year wow one year by land you drove uh, or buster you know through uh, sometimes by uh, yeah by by bus mainly uh, and we we were in the Amazonas by boat for about five Wasn't it from five to crazy eight days adventure bro and and yeah by boat for sure in the Gulf of Uraba between Colombia and Panama you need to cross by by boat there is no road there and and yeah we did it in a year and same thing you know visiting eco villages and communities and and in every place we got we were kind of like saying to each other oh this is the place we should have stayed here <laughs> but that something moved us and moved us and moved us uh, and then we got to colombia in colombia we were very well connected with the people there with a, a network of eco villages happening there mm. And we felt great there. We were uh, amazing. You know, I think we shared something with the culture of Colombia. Sure. And hey, it's not yeah. far from here. Not far from here. Yeah. And and yeah, when when we were there, I remember having a call from a really good friend of mine or an email or so, who is part of this community and telling me that they were uh, that that, that you here were needing someone to stay here on the land, pioneer. Uh, and then we had it in mind and at the end we decided okay let's go and see how Who was it? let's go back uh, christian christian a really good friend of mine from high school uh-huh he uh, we connected every once in a while while i was traveling and then he told me about this happening you know the land being bought uh, brad being here brad <laughs> i think brad was here in this brad was on the before. podcast yeah and, and i haven't so, had christian yet we'll so get him on um 
uh, yeah, we decided to come. And, and yeah, we, we came here, Rosa and me, in the way we found, uh, we adopted a dog in the way, in the road coming to here. Yaku. Yaku, who <laughs> helped us a lot here, who helped us a lot, you know, in terms of, of dealing with, um, uh, you know, with the space, you know, it's a, it's interesting when you have a, a, a dog's, part of that, part of all this thing is like rebuilding my relationship with nature, mm -hmm. which is, I feel it's part of, we should make and sometimes having a pet or a duck or even a cat it's it's kind of like a tool sometimes but at the same is is risky you know like to have them as pets they help you adapting mm -hmm. but at the same time they have an effect in nature so i at that time it was an very effect. helpful an effect an impact on nature yeah an impact you know? right like sure. like the way they uh like keeping animals away for instance barking exactly will keep other sounds, animals away exactly sure, or sure. or even hunting sometimes. even hunting for sure yeah so um but yeah that happened at that time when we were coming <laughs> and we got here and we started like pioneering here for months and uh, uh, and it was great. That's that's why I told you that it was our early honeymoon. Because <laughs> it was the rainy season. It was rainy and, and dry season. I think we were here for... I mean, during that time, some folks that are part of the community came to experiment the land. And then we were kind of hosting them and helping them to... And that's when my my kind of like... How you say? Like my... I mean, it, it wasn't a job really but it was kind of an intention to help people to understand they are coming to a natural space that has its its risks mm -hmm. risks and its challenges but mm -hmm. at the same is beautiful and you can experience new things so yeah i feel that's part of what we all humans need to do mostly the ones who grew up in the cities as i did you yeah. know i grew up my early my childhood was in a city here in, in Costa Rica. Yeah, well, so yeah, let's talk about a little bit about uh, where you grew up. You grew up in Cartago. You said you were friends with Christian, so did you grow up in Cartago? We grew up, we, yeah, I grew up in Cartago, and uh, that's where most of my family is. My mom's still there in Cartago. Is your family, and, like, how, how many generations back would you say has your family been in this area? Like, a long time, or like a few generations, or... Uh, Do you know much about your lineage and history? Like I'm not curious. so much, but I can tell that at least four generations mm -hmm. were there before, and from my father. You know, I have a huge family. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm one of two hundred cousins. <laughs> oh my god! Direct cousins, you know. Catholics. Uh, yeah, my <laughs> father had. 17 brothers and sisters catholics they love to and make babies we, and then yeah i have cousins yeah all over costa rica but mostly based there in in cartago and wow. they are they're very related to agriculture so i had some from 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 them but my father was not he, he was more working on on the city yeah your a, father had like a, a, a car uh, in business right that was after he got retired Oh. He was a former di uh, school director school and director. supervisor and oh. first teacher, director, supervisor. And then when he got retired, he started he started that oh. entrepreneur of importing cars. Oh, okay. So it was like yeah. his, oh, it's interesting. So he retired and then just wanted yeah. to keep doing it. He something. still had energy. See, yeah, he of still, course. He's a, I remember him as a person with lots of energy, mm -hmm. always, you know. And yeah, that was part of my, my childhood. But at some point when I got 18, I... I traveled to states to Colorado. Mm -hmm. I was working in a in a ski resort. Right. So that took me away from from home, which is not common here in Costa Rica. Most most of the times, mm -hmm. like Costa Rica and young people stayed in their houses for for a while. But I I took kind of like as soon as I could, <laughs> I went away and I started also traveling around Costa Rica, visiting and volunteering in national parks. That was part of my my young yeah uh, oh, wait so times. volunteering before even you you got your degree in biology before for sure before. it's just part of your interest yeah that was in my interest since the beginning you know getting to know all these protected areas here in costa rica and nature itself so i was volunteering in in several national parks and yeah, exploring. And, then, and then 
So you went to the U.S. What, what I'm curious, like what you just wanted to get a change of culture? Like why did you choose Colorado? Just because you thought it was a nice place or? There was a program at, at that time, you know, of, of getting your visa by being a student. I was studying at that time. Okay. So during my vacation, I worked. And I really worked there. I worked during the day, at night, <laughs> in this ski resort. With As a some, lift, lift operator? Uh, I was working on top of the lift in a restaurant. Mm. Yeah, I was working there uh, during the day. Mm -hmm. And then every day I came down snowboarding, <laughs> and rolling in the snow. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no, I, later I, I learned. See, it was great times. Snowboarding, and then I, I was working <laughs> in the village in a souvenir shop for 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 a while. So was that like your that was your first time kind of out of Costa Rica, like as a living yeah, experience? Kind of away from uh, my time of independence, you know, from from being 18, at home. You said, and yeah, being at home with my mm. parents, so it it gave you some independence and put you out in the world, you know. Well, it's it's interesting because you know I think of you as such like a. Um, I don't know, like you're so gent you have such a gentle nature and you're so like, you know, into the local biology and everything wherever you are, but also you have this super adventurous. I mean, obviously, you've tra you've literally traveled the world. Um mm -hmm. gone to I you know, I wish I could say I've done nearly half of that, but I haven't. It's like it's such a blessing to um haven't done that when you were young too, right? Mm -hmm. Like do you think Yeah. It was a very blessed time for sure and I I feel my life has had those episodes of kind of contraction and expansion mm -hmm. and and then when we got here to Takotal it was more a time of contraction because all what we had absorbed there during our trip right. we got it here and we were by ourselves here uh, we didn't even went to the closest towns here we were here like kind of eating from the <laughs> land there were less people for sure no. less people around a lot of fruit trees ar around, so we were harvesting from here. For sure, we were buying food here and there, but it was more like here, you know, like being just here, like very contracted, like getting to know each other. I mean, we knew each other, but even deeper with Rosa. And then we got married and we had the kids. Mm. We had the kids that completely transformed our life, you mm -hmm. know, transform all of our perspectives, you know, of life and, and in a good sense. And you had, the stages, you, know? you had them here, you were living here while you had them, right? You didn't yeah. have them on the land, but you, you were living here still. Like, it, and, the, and, you know, for some perspective, we had Brad on the, the show to like talk about like this a little bit, but it's hard to really describe how different it was in this valley back then, because mm -hmm. literally when you guys were here, like Brad wasn't even probably here still. He was going back. You came because he didn't want to stay. Or he might have come I mean, and gone. He, he was here for several time, for a lot of time. Right, and then but he you guys to travel and exactly. So we came. You guys were solidly here while no one else was here at times, holding down the fort. Um, and like only Diego and Araceli lived on our road, and like yeah, like we didn't. Our even... neighbors from the other side of the river. La Libertad. Uh, yeah. Uh, right. See. Fernando and Noemi Jesus. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was just such a different world, and like even. Yeah, like, even if you went to town, there was nothing organic, no organic food in town to buy. Mm -hmm. And, like, uh, you know, it was like you had to stock up because there was, like, yeah, we literally ate as much as we could off the land, right? And you yeah. guys, yeah, it was just, it was mm -hmm. a, it was a literally like living in the jungle back then, I think. Like, people often say, like, it's so nice to live in the jungle now. And I'm like, I look around, I'm like, I see a lot of houses and it's like see. subdivisions, but like. See, it was, <laughs> yeah, it was great times. And yeah, we had the, ba the, the babies came here as babies, just like with a few days after being born. <laughs> and they started absorb absorbing that, you know, my son, as you can see, the environment here is very rocky. Mm -hmm. There is a dormant volcano around here. Mm -hmm. uh, so all these drugs. Was that drugs, Tudu no, another in the back. Uh -huh. Yeah, in the back. Yeah, Turubaris is far from here. Uh, it's closer to here than Turubaris. Yeah, closer. Just uh, up, like in the upper part of this watershed, there is a, a Cerro Pelon, which is a ah. dormant volcano there. Oh, interesting. Yeah, you can hike. You can make a hike to up to the to the upper. And that's part why of there's the hot springs. There's there's, there's hot springs thermal around. springs yeah. in our river. Mm -hmm. Not exactly. Not super super hot. Here and there, like small ponds with. with uh, I mean, small pools. That, I've always wondered why that was, because there's an old volcano yeah. here. Mm -hmm. 
yeah uh, imagine all these drugs came here at <laughs> some point uh, and they didn't come from the from the you from the, the sky, sky. They meteors came from, not meteors from <laughs> they came from there like explosion and, you think like lava like explosion yeah for sure for sure yeah see huh. it's a, it's the, it's the way i read this landscape here mm. at some point that when that was active uh, it's when all this rocky environment was created and the point there is that my son started <laughs> uh climbing trees <laughs> even before he was able to how you call this crawl before crawl he was learning to climb to, to climb because you were putting yeah. him up there and yeah i mean everywhere there are rocks <laughs> so he he learned be, uh, first to climb then to crawl and uh -huh. and yeah he was here for at least three four years and then my daughter came yeah my daughter is two years uh, younger and yeah, it was gr it was great times. Yeah, I really enjoyed those times, and I know they absorb that in their in their personalities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are, they have it in in. Maybe they don't remember very well details, mm -hmm. but you can tell it's in their in their souls, in their personalities. For sure, yeah. mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, wow, it was a really it is, and it's still special. I mean, it's it's still special. And you guys built. A house you built like uh, you were one of the yeah you guys you have a land here so that was the thing you work traded mm -hmm. that was part of the trade back then we just so many of us didn't live in this country and we can only come for a few months a year so we were like looking for people any you know to, to come and like just hold it down and and because you know there's squatters around and whatever we just we felt like we needed to have a presence on the land mm -hmm. so christian yeah contacted you guys you came here and then Based on that, you were able, you we were like that was a trade, right? Like it was a work trade. You traded mm -hmm. for land, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Like I just think, you know, that's that you know that that was even a possibility because now in this valley, like I can't even ima <laughs> I can't imagine that happening. Like, hey Marcelo, and, and <laughs> yeah, <Steven. laughs> you know, after a while, um, yeah, we realized that it was a place where we wanted to be. When I built that cabin that we have, I, I mean, we can call it a house, but it's more as a well. A cabin. It was it was more of a house back then. I mean, we that's what our houses were back then. Yeah, it yeah. was a, when my son was in the womb, so I was feeling that need of having a safe place. We were, I mean, we were in safe places, but it was more like shelters, <laughs> I would say. And then uh, I felt that need. I, I always say that I was kind of like nesting, creating the nest for when my son came. And as uh, I, not as soon as he came, we went into that cabin. But a little later, we were able to start inhabiting that cabin. And, and it's there. It's still there. Still I have, there. I have done some improvements on it. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, now it's inhabited by bees, native <laughs> bees. <laughs> Nat uh, the, yeah. the Mariolas. Uh, several several types of uh -huh. native bees yeah uh, luckily you know we built that house out of bamboo and natural materials uh -huh. and some of the bees just came came to the bamboo and uh -huh. started colonizing the bamboo later i i moved them from the bamboo into boxes mm -hmm. and now i'm beekeeping um mariola uh -huh. one that is called sonquano and another that is called Hikote Gato, which is the one that the Mayans use it a lot for doing meli melipony culture. That's the way it's called. I don't know what that is. What yeah. is that? What's melipony culture? It's, it, it's, a, um, the, uh, it's beekeeping, but with native bees. Uh -huh. the, the group of native, be native bees are called meliponas. So melipony culture is like apiculture because the, the traditional or the most used honeybee is uh, apis. So that's why it's called apiculture. Because it's a different, so it's a different um, variety, uh, like genus or species. It's a different, yeah, uh, it's a different, uh, even whole group of, of bees, you know. There are like four main groups of bees. Uh, the apis are in one of the groups. The meliponas are in another group, which is meliponini, mm -hmm. apini, meliponini. There are other bees, which are the, bumble, the bumblebees which are another group, the mm -hmm. Bombini. And then there is another group, which is a very interesting one that it's called Euglossini, which are the orchid bees. They call it the orchid bees, but, but are those bees which are kind of like red or blue or green metallic. Mm. Have you seen those? I've seen those. I think so, I maybe didn't think they were bees though. They pollinate uh, orchids mainly. They are attracted by the fragrance. The males collect fragrance and put it in their legs. 
and then make this place to the females with all yeah. the smells like they make their own bouquet and the best bouquet is the the one that wins. Ooh, yes. <laughs> so that's, a, that's, for, <laughs> that's for that type of beast. But the ones that produce honey are the apini, the apis, and the meliponini, the meli, which are the natives, because the apis are not native from here. The meliponini are native from here, which are many species, more than 50 species here happening in Costa Rica. What do we have here? Because Gustavo is also, um, and, he, and I, I will talk about this in a minute, he's been part of Finca Vida Verde since the beginning, like I mentioned, and one of the things you still do is help me with the, the bees. Yeah. What do we have here? Uh, you have the apis, the, the apini. Apis. Yeah, the okay. apis, the honeybees. The honeybees, the ones that you can harvest more honey so what's the other with, with the melopan meliponini meliponini those are uh, not for honey they are for honey very very medicinal honey less amount of honey uh -huh. but more potent and more medicinal potent. it's kind of like of, what's the ones in new zealand they have the makuna is what they call it Maka, man, I, manuka manuka honey. manuka honey i think manuka honey it's uh i haven't i mean i don't have the the information fresh but i think it's a type of of plant that they uh, use the nectar from I see. Like and then they make the manuka but those are probably the apis. apis okay probably got it apis. so this is a whole different thing i'm yeah. curious to try some of that honey yeah i mean the honey here is amazing because it's very it comes from a really wide diverse of plants right uh, this ecosystem here is a very special ecosystem because it's in between the dry forest to the north to guanacaste and the humid forest from here to the south right in the way to to panama like uh, so we are in the in the frontier in the edge mm -hmm. in between those, uh, life zones and that create a lot of diversity here mm -hmm. a lot of species from the dry forest still occur here and a lot of the ones from the from the humid forest as well Totally. So same thing with animals. I'm talking about plants, but same thing with animals. So it's a, it's a very interesting <laughs> ecosystem here. Something that we need to care of. Yeah, that biodiversity is our it's our heritage. You know, it's what we have inherited, and is uh, the most precious thing we have here is the biodiversity. Well, know? and that's maybe one of my concerns about this area, like developing so much, is that I'm concerned a little bit about losing some of that biodiversity. Like, I mean. You know, we're all a little bit responsible. Like I look around Finca Vida Verde, like, yes, I like to have a nice little, you know, an area of manicured space, but also to have, you know, food growing. Like it's this balance of, like you said, like, mm -hmm. how do we keep the biodiversity, the nature and the, bi and like the nature, the, the natural forest, but also incorporate food mm -hmm. because we need food. And otherwise, if we don't grow our own food, then we have to pr get it from somewhere else that, and you know that's not so sustainable then uh, regenerative then you're like you know using gasoline to ship it around and stuff so for me that was always a big thing for me here was to how do we grow food and i'm still slowly learning about all the amazing species of everything here mm. like and yeah that's a concern yeah. i have i don't know see for sure, sure it was my concern as well and at the beginning i was a little skeptic about all these people coming here yeah, what's and your as, take on as it? As we were here, like very introspective here at that time, and I, we start seeing people coming, we were kind of afraid. But at the same time, at some point, I realized I was being more uh, self, how you say? I mean, I was here and I, I was enjoying this. It was not only for me. Selfish. Selfish, yeah. Selfish. Yeah, you I, felt like it was selfish. Uh, yeah, and then later uh -huh. I understood. There's it's people coming, there's nothing you can do. Just help them to understand there is a precious biodiverse and a lot of organisms here and ecosystems that need to be cared and that's why when i started like inventorying plants i did a nice inventory of plants like trees bushes totally ground covers uh, all these type of things i made an inventory and now i'm promoting and and advising people in how to include all these native vegetation in their gardens it's not a thing of bringing things from outside only if not like letting the plants that grow naturally here grow they are adapted to the to the very strong dry season we have and to the very strong rainy season we have mm -hmm. and they can deal with that so you don't really need to care as much and you have their beauty sometimes you even have food out of them there are like many plants which are edible for sure medicine all plants hold medicine mm -hmm. it's just a thing of understanding 
Uh, and and some of them are very obvious in terms of medicine that grows naturally here and it's just a thing of, of understanding that and, and including them in your in your systems uh, in your gardens and around the house there's so much here that like you know even local like many lo like there's so many different species of plants here that I remember even like finding new things and being like what the heck is this and even talking to locals who had no idea what it was mm -hmm. remember we had um was a luis um was it luis povera one of some biologists that came around here and we we're mm -hmm. like we always saw this one plant that like smelled terrible and like looked like cannabis kind of you remember that one ah <laughs> yeah for sure the ruelia it's a ruelia and we ruelia. never knew what that plant was See, so you're it smells like goat it smells like goat like crap goat. yeah like, like gold male goat gold male yeah, yeah. male goat mm -hmm. and your book um which i have a copy of i love the not the i don't have the physical i have the the pdf yeah, version uh -huh. of it it's so great like if you ever need to look something up like um, and everyone should know, like locally, if you're around here, where is that a publicly available somewhere? They I mean, they I have can... shared it with everybody. It was everyone thing, can yeah. get it. I yeah, <laughs> at the beginning I started doing that. I mean, since the very beginning I got here, I I'm a biologist, but then I I for a while I worked in a botanical garden, so my, I I studied more botany than zoology. And and then when I got here, I started like seeing all those plants, and every time I found something in, in bloom or in fruit, I was curious and taking mm -hmm. pictures. So that book is all the summarize of the culmination uh, of the culmination years. Yeah, of, of of all that. But for sure, um, uh, I did it like w when I saw more people coming here, and uh, with the support of people from Alegria mm -hmm. and Norman, who really trust in that. Really grateful for that. Trusting shout in that out to Norman Brooks allowed me to to really put that on all together, you know, like uh, uh, to to use my time because it took a lot of time, but to put all together and and made this amazing um, help or or tool. Yeah. But it's still a lot of missing there. A lot a lot of plants missing there. Every time I'm walking, <laughs> I see, see a new one. one. New, <laughs> and yeah, I'm thinking I have a lot of new pictures to you add. You're going to make a uh, second edition. Yeah, I, it, it's needed. It's nice. a, yeah, it's required. It's crazy because there's so much in there too. And it's yeah. like, that's, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing about Costa Rica. We're, at, we're in, you know, you talk about being in the edge. We're at the edge in Costa Rica of two different zones. But even Costa Rica itself is like this edge between North and South America. Yeah, yeah, it's the bridge. It's the like bridge. so much has been come through here from mm -hmm. various places like from north and south and yeah. also just being the tropical you know unique place it is it has its own abundance of nature a lot of microclimates as well totally. you know we are here we can drive one hour and it's cold and you need something to cover yourself and that was the cold. biggest surprise to me like you mm -hmm. know like going to san jose one night i remember like i had to go to the mall and buy uh like a a hoodie sweater i had to go buy a sweater because yeah. i was so cold in san see, jose see, like... it's a lot of microclimates here it's amazing <laughs> and if you if you head north it gets dry that's where that's where the last uh, patch of dry forest is like because the whole coast the whole pacific coast from here to mexico was formerly a dry forest but now there are like small patches of that you know and mm. one of them is the Santa Rosa National Park, which is an amazing place to visit. Uh, there are other like private um, protected areas, uh, but yeah, that's completely also different weather than here. You know, like you, you, you instead of putting something, you need to take off cloths. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <you know>? exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. really, really hard. And speaking of uh, plants and, and trees, like I've a number of our trees here at Finca Vida Verde were either um get brought here by you as uh you know like because you travel around you go you just come back from the caribbean yeah. like you know you, you brought me some trees from there at one point and mm -hmm. and like i remember when i we first started i mean i was living in the u.s i was working in the u.s and coming here three months a year but you were on the land so i was like whatever paying you such a small amount way too little but it was what i could afford at the time and you were planting trees and and doing stuff which are now i mean i think you planted the guanabana you planted those guanabanas i remember the guanabanas the three guanabanas 
Sí, en otros trees que I may not remember, but I remember the guanabanas. You did the guanabanas, you planted the Malabar chestnut, ah, okay. French peanut, ah, yeah. which we ah. now are selling, we have so many of. Yeah. You planted, Amazing, no? I believe, the carambola, the carambola dulce, okay. which uh -huh. for years I was like, mm -hmm. it, I, we're gonna, I don't know if it's really a carambola dulce. You told me it was a carambola dulce, okay. but you never really know until you try the fruit. Let's because check. carambolas are, <laughs> we had our first fruit this year. Okay. And it was a sweet, oh, very good. sweet, such nice. a good one. Nice. And um, yeah, so I know at least those. Um, okay. So Great. much yeah. gratitude to you for the love that you've put into this for place. Sure. You know, I, there is a special story about this place. I remember since I saw this place for the be from the beginning, I knew that you were wanting to build here your, your home. And, but we, when we first got here with Rosa, we realized or, or we learned from Colombia that every once in a while they they all gather with other communities happening in the region mm -hmm. or even in the country and they were doing those efforts every year to put to put uh, to gather people together from different communities different communities and we we did that here when we the got minga. here uh, uh, yeah minga or a, a eco village gathering different. okay and then the minga yeah is the work together for, okay, for doing work. Uh, okay. an effort Uh, to help someone in the community. You oh, know? you did the eco villages gathering here. We did. We did in the. I think in the second year we were here. We did it, and I remember coming here uh, to do a ceremony at the end. Uh, Temascal. We did the Temascal right, right there where your house is, and it was a really potent and 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 healing Temascal. I remember coming out of that sweat lodge. Why do I Temascal? not even know? I love this. I don't yeah. even know this story. Like, this yeah. is the energy. And people are always telling me, they always come to my house and they say, this place has great gravity. You know this word? <laughs> I didn't even know what this word meant, but gravity means like, in that sense, like, you don't want to leave. You just kind of want to relax and yeah. stay here. Uh -huh. Oh, that's so good to know. Yeah, wow. it's, the, it's the, you know, I feel the spirituality is... For me, spirituality is that, you know, like the way we humans connect with the spirits of nature. And, and, and we bring things. And things like that ceremony brought things here. And some of these Absolutely. spirits stayed here and connected with the spirits of nature. And people feel it. Every time you go to a place, you will feel what, what's there and mm. will attract you or, <laughs> or make you feel comfortable or not. <laughs> There's and here I feel nice. It's so it's many more stories too nice. about this land. I would love to. I feel like there's so much more to cover. So I keep saying this, like I want to have people on for longer. But um, I just, you know, before we we wrap it up, like what's next for what's what's next you you for you guys? Do you have a plan, like a five year plan, ten year plan? Your 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 place is for sale here in Taquatal. So you've been living down in Ecovia. Mm -hmm. um, Because of the kids, I imagine, like the school, the access. Uh -huh. You know, our place is, is here. Still, we feel this connection with, with this place. Just in the scenario that some person who is going to take care of that place the way we have done. Uh, because we have, I mean, even though we built our house there, Uh, we have been protecting all the plants around and that's mm -hmm. where I that's where I learned a lot about about native vegetation because I was living there and living plants just grow around the house totally. so I I, I want to I want to find something who is going to be taking care of that in, in a good way mm -hmm. but we I mean my son he really have a, a lot of Um, attachment to the place he does so he's not so up to, to really to leave it someone else oh, interesting. There. so he's very I think he feels connection like uh, of that of that place a lot and so we still don't know if the person appears okay. and it's a uh, really in the line that, that we okay so I spoke too want. soon so it's not really <laughs> for sale it's and actually just to be very clear like if anybody is interested and you think you're that person talk with tall we have a little bit of a we have a membership like It's not, you're not buying a piece of land. You would never be doing that. Like you would be joining a community, yeah. like there's a process and you would have to be a good fit based on their pro type criteria and the community's criteria. See, so just to be clear about that. Yeah, and for sure we, we also feel really good connection with the people here, you know. With of the course, people of we love you. We love amazing. you guys. And, and also, yeah, right now we're living close to here. Um, we're living in a beautiful house built by by this person 
Sunray. Sunray Kelly. Who Sunray just Kelly passed he away. just passed away really. Yeah. And I'm really grateful with Sunray because it's been amazing the last two years living in a house that it's alive. It's, yeah. We're living with many organisms there and lots of plants. And so it belongs to a person in Canada, a really good friend as well, uh, Gerard, mm -hmm. really grateful with Gerard. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, our next steps, uh, we're, we don't know really clearly. We, we have done that way always, you know, like not leaving the universe uh, feel what's next, you know, and uh, and so what I know is that I will keep doing my effort, my personal effort in supporting uh, people who come here to build back the relationship with nature in a way that they are not afraid of being in a new place, and and also in general in the country I'm also helping farmers. I'm working for a company who's supporting regenerative farming so mm. i'm doing that in the caribbean in the pacific and mm. um, growing native plants that will give us uh, amazing ingredients for skincare products and and i know i can i can also like build that type of of business re regenerative business here locally mm -hmm. in a way that we find ways to <clears throat> to give good use of the medicine that it's already here mm -hmm. and improve the economy of local people here as well you totally. know, and the life and, and and most more than all that it's like improving our relationship with nature which is what needs to be regenerated mm -hmm. uh oh i think that's uh -oh. a good ending spot right there <laughs> that's like the that's like the summary of it all mm -hmm. um so much more to talk about i just like I know there's a million Taco Tall stories that I'd love to like have you on someday to talk about. Um, and we didn't even talk about Rosa. I would love to get Rosa on here. We'll have her as a separate podcast. Rosa's mm -hmm. amazing. Lo I mean, there's just so much. I'm not even going to get into it. We'll have Rosa on the show someday if she's willing. Please, Rosa. And um, yeah, I just want to say thank you for, for, for all you have done for Taco Tall, for Finca Vida Verde, for the, the, the entire Machuca Valley and for the country, for the world. Gustavo, your your energy is needed more than ever. Thanks, human. Yeah, Thank brother. you. Thank you. I'm really grateful with the world as well, with the universe. <laughs> you put me here in this moment. You know? Gracias. Gustavo Thank Rojas, uh, Matthew Human. This is La Vida Verde podcast. We release episodes every Tuesday at noon. Um, you can find us on Instagram at Finca Vida Verde CR. You can find us on, uh, Facebook at, uh, Finca Vida Verde. Um, you're probably, if you're watching this, you're watching this on YouTube. It's youtube.com at La Vida Verde podcast. You can see it, listen to it on Spotify, on Apple podcast. If you love this podcast and you love what we're doing, please consider joining our Patreon, patreon.com slash La Vida Verde podcast. And uh, I think that's about it. Until next time, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Gracias. Okay. gracias. Muchas gracias. Nos vemos. Pura Vida. Ciao.